Hello Internet, Taliesin here. The opening part of Legion is over. The race to Emerald Nightmare Mythic World First is done and dusted, and actually in the end, Exorcist dropped Xavius quicker than Computer Doctors dropped their last logo designer, making him the least scary nightmare since Wes Craven's new nightmare, which in itself was about as scary as a kitten giving a massage to another kitten. What this means is that we have now essentially had all of the content that we're going to get in World of Warcraft 7.0. Okay, fine, 7.0.3, which means it's time for us to look back at the hits and misses of this patch that has given us so much, from new continents, new classes and specs, more tears than a Grey's Anatomy season finale, and a new and entirely justified hatred for seagulls, because seriously fuck seagulls and fuck whoever thought of seagulls in the first place, fuck them. So join us as we rate what was good, what was bad, seagulls, and what was downright weird about World of Warcraft Legion 7.0.3. Okay, go, 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 go. Now, let's be honest, launch day hasn't always been the very pinnacle of a WoW player's user experience, with the opening hours or even days of any expansion pretty much guaranteed to turn into a massive shitshow of things simply not working like they should, like trickle-down economics or Pokemon Go. Warlords of Draenor was a case in point. Disconnections, lag, DDoS, confusion and anger as vast swathes of the player base, in the US at least, simply couldn't access the game, and when they did find finally access the game, it was Warlords of Draenor, so you know, it didn't get any better from there. But the Legion launch has rewritten the script in a big way, because it was pretty much faultless. Yes, there were queues to get into most realms and the odd bug here and there, but whatever did go wrong tended to get ironed out pretty quickly, and the entire thing felt like, well, playing a video game actually, which is a much harder thing to achieve than it sounds for an MMO on launch day, so hats off to Blizzard for that one, and for a pretty painless experience, which allows us players to focus less on creating QQ threads on Battle.net, moaning about the shitty launch, and more time on the important things, like creating QQ threads on Battle.net complaining about warlocks, because seriously Blizzard, what the fuck have you done to warlocks? Life is about making mistakes and learning from those mistakes, isn't it? And everyone makes mistakes, like when you assumed that those guys that wrote Lost had seriously any fucking idea at all where they were taking that story, that was a mistake. And Blizzard makes mistakes too, like for example, calling the Warcraft movie DVD launch party Orktober must have seemed like a really good idea at the time, but that's before everyone realised that the Orktober hashtag is already used plenty by lovers of pretty graphic Ork-based homosexual fanfic. Not as glorious as Susan Album Party perhaps, but still pretty awkward. Is that why they got preached to host it, do you think? Anyway, one mistake that has haunted Blizzard since WOD is garrisons and mission tables, which will forever be remembered as the Jar Jar Binks of World of Warcraft. No one asked for it, no one liked it, and no matter how much we pleaded, no one would just kill it. So it was very important that class order halls in Legion felt suitably different and refined from garrisons, even though they are essentially the same thing. And I think, pretty much, they do. The whole class fantasy thing that Legion pushes really does create a real differentiation between classes. It's really satisfying, and I think the order halls do a great job of promoting that. You don't live in them all the time like you did your garrisons, but it is important that you drop by every now and then, briefly, to pick up quests that importantly send you out again into the world. It's fun to see other people running around it, and there's nothing Thing to keep you there, so there's no need to linger. The mission tables themselves are a bit meh, but they do allow you, with the new Warcraft phone app, to play Warcraft while you're on the toilet, and that is a win. On top of that, obviously, no fucking around, they look awesome. True Shot Lodge and Hogwarts, I mean, um, the Hall of Guardian, being particular favourites. And the Order Hall campaigns are brilliant as well. Leveling my warrior felt like a completely different experience to leveling my priest or my mage because of it, and that's a really great thing. For the first time ever, I'm looking forward to levelling one of each class through this game. The Artifact Weapons Now, one of my biggest worries about Legion has so far been proved unfounded. I was concerned that having one weapon throughout the entire expansion would get dull, but in 7.0.3, at least, it's been quite the opposite. The level of investment that I found myself having in my artifacts so far has really surprised me, actually, and it does feel like something that enriches my character, as well as giving me more things, more quests to do. Even if those quests are just to unlock appearances on the artifact, it's fun 
optional content, which I think Legion is awesome at overall. Also, I assumed at some point that NPCs all commenting in awe of my impressive weapon would get old, but you know what? It never does get old, I can confirm that. And despite previous concerns, I don't even really notice that everyone has the same weapon as me. Unless, of course, I'm playing a Fire Mage, because seriously, look at that. The fact that it's something that constantly upgrades at max level is really well done too, and so far, pleasant surprise. And something that genuinely encourages me to play other classes and specs, even though I have to go and do an artifact quest for each one. Take note, Blizzard, sometimes making something just that little bit harder really does encourage people to do it. One of the most obvious and distinctive parts of any expansion is the levelling zones, the actual physical world where the action takes place, and where you're going to be spending the majority of your time. And if you need a quick recap on the story so far, then it goes a bit like this. Space, ice, fire, manga, spiky, okay? I don't think I'm being controversial when I say that, along with the music, this is an area where Blizzard never really drops the ball. And Legion is no exception. The Broken Isles are absolutely stunning. As you'd expect from a game which is two years newer than its last version, the graphics are the most detailed and beautiful we've ever seen in WoW anyway. But more than that, I think the designers have created a world which fits together perfectly and makes sense. I mean, some of the things you see as you travel around the continent are just breathtaking, and it seems like there's new little details and flavour around every corner, or in every cave, or nook, or cranny. And that did exist in Draenor too, but unlike that expansion, Legion is always finding reasons to send you back out into its zones and find new things. Because of the world quests and profession quests and class order hall quests, you're never done with Stormheim in the same way that you were done with Gorgrond. And believe me, I was done with Gorgrond the second I hit 94, you hear? And as such, it was also probably my favourite ever levelling experience in modern WoW too. Mostly, I think, because of the zone scaling and the freedom that lack of pressure gives you in levelling. The fact that you never out-level any of the zone content and therefore the experience it awards are always relevant and worthwhile meant that for the first time ever I felt okay about staying in zones until I was really ready to leave rather than when the XP bar told me it was pointless being there any longer. I didn't have to leave storylines hanging with no resolution like Firefly. I felt more connected to the world and the story as a result. <laughs> Man, the storytelling in some of these zones is awesome. I mean, we are talking Lance Armstrong levels of storytelling here. As far as my favourite of the zones go, I think Val Shirar has probably the best narrative campaign of any level leveling zone ever in the game. I love the atmosphere and the scale of High Mountain, but my favourite actual zone is probably, controversially, Azuna. I grew up on the coast, you see, and for me this zone captures that feel of a coastline so perfectly that the entire zone is just ridiculously evocative for me. I think it's just beautiful and real, and I love spending time there. It reminds me of my own childhood. Basically, if there was a quest where you convinced a naga to go into an offy and buy you a bottle of white lightning because you're underage, that would be my childhood. Now, all in all then, in case you haven't guessed, the Legion levelling experience and zones get a massive thumbs up from me. I'm probably going to get a bit of shit for this, but I'm really enjoying the way that professions are working out in Legion. I mean, admittedly, it wouldn't take much to improve on Warlords there, where most professions were made about as relevant as new DLC for FIFA 13. But they now follow the general Legion system of progressing through quests, exploration, dungeons, you know, actual content to level you and find new patterns and recipes. It's just more interesting stuff to do, with more new characters to interact with and see die as soon as you like them, obviously. I mean, seriously, Blizz, stop killing all the characters I like just for a minute or two, okay? Please. And more stories to take part in. Sad stories where your friends die. It is Legion after all. And of course some people don't like how some of these quests will inevitably take you to dungeons and raid content. And I do understand that concern, but for me it enhances the experience and makes it a lot more interesting than just gathering a whole heap of resources and making stuff until you cap. You still have to do that all anyway, by the way. And also, as always, Archaeology is what all the really cool kids do because it gives you amazing shit like this. Yes, this. See you later, losers. Much love, the Flying Skeleton Starman. Of course, the end game experience is what, ultimately, any World of Warcraft expansion will be judged on in the long term. And most of that will be coming in later patches, and it would be wrong to judge the current build in those terms. 7.0.3 isn't supposed to stay relevant and interesting until the very end of the expansion. It only has to last us until 7.1 comes out, which looks like it will probably be around mid-November time. And with that in mind, how does the end game content hold up so far? Let's look first 
at World Quests. And World Quests are essentially dailies, just like we've always had, but it's like Mark Ruffalo's Hulk compared to Ed Norton's Hulk. The same thing, but done a whole lot better. And again, this is something that the zone scaling that I've been raving about throughout this video enables in the first place. And so far, I'm having a great time with World Quests. It's there for me to do as much or as little as I like. And yeah, it has the potential to be a little bit grindy, but the quests are just about varied enough at the moment to keep it interesting. They take you out into the world and interacting with it, which feels great. I feel like I know the Broken Isles better already than I ever knew Draenor. And the world feels bigger as a result. If world quests are going to stay interesting, then future patches are probably going to have to see some new elements thrown into the mix at some point. But as far as 7.0.3 is concerned, they are a triumph and do exactly what they're supposed to do. Oh, and can we just take a moment, just for a moment, to appreciate the single most useful item in WoW history? Ladies and gentlemen, please give it up for the flight whistle. Raiding is one of my absolute favourite parts of World of Warcraft. No matter how much other elements of the games have changed over the years, raiding generally has got better and better. For me, it's the ultimate culmination of what an MMORPG is. 20 odd players have all gone through the game themselves, working together, combining their powers to take out impossibly large, powerful and complex enemies. Let's tackle the elephant in the room. I can't pretend not to be slightly disappointed with how easy Emerald Nightmare is. Although clearing normal on a first attempt is really exciting on that first night when your guild does it, I just don't think you should be able to brute force an entire raid the first time you ever see it on any difficulty. And that's what we did with a bare minimum of understanding of any mechanics at all. And I can't pretend that I wasn't disappointed to see the mythic race over so quickly either. Exorcist beat the whole raid in 18 hours, which is no time at all. I've had nights sleep that have lasted longer than that. 18 hours is less time than Donald Trump spends on Twitter every day. You couldn't even watch the Harry Potter movies in 18 hours. Like, you could watch the Twilight movies, but bear in mind it would feel like a lot more than 18 hours and you might not make it out alive, just be warned. So yes, I know, it's not even the whole first tier, I get that, but there's just a part of me which is a bit disappointed by how it all flew by, and I can't pretend otherwise. Which is a shame, because actually Emerald Nightmare is otherwise an awesome experience. It's the perfect opening raid in many ways, bosses with interesting but easily communicated mechanics, the entire thing looks amazing, and it's really rooted in the story so far. If I'm completely honest, I never really had any idea while we raided Heimel. But in the Emerald Nightmare, I'm totally invested in the plot and why we're there. Basically, is to kill this prick who did this. I mean, seriously, what more motivation do you need? Actually, now I think about it, it's no wonder you went down so quick, is it? I'm going to come straight out and say this. I think Suramar is the single best thing that Blizzard have ever created for single player endgame in World of Warcraft. I mean, it's awesome! An absolutely massive zone built almost entirely around storyline, which brings back a genuine sense of RPG to the game that I haven't felt since I first started playing. And I know what you're thinking. You're thinking, but Taliesin, what about all that horrible rep grinding you have to do to progress through the story? To which I say, what rep grind, bro? See, for me, there is no rep grind because I refuse to grind it. Because I don't have to. What's the rush? So for example, withered training? Fuck that shit. That is terrible and I hate it, so I'm not going to do it. I do a few world quests every day or so if I feel like it, and the emissaries when they crop up, and that's about it. Yeah, it means I got into the Court of Stars about a week after lots of other people did, but so what? I was still ready to raid when the time came. I did not have to grind at it at all to be up to speed with everyone when I needed to be. So for me, it just wasn't a problem at all. Instead, for me, Suramar has been nothing but a joy. A genuine old school adventure game with a brilliant involving storyline. I really feel like I'm infiltrating a living, breathing, breathing place and helping the resistance, it's great. Okay, so there's some weirdness, like how come I can get in trouble with guards even though I'm wearing an amazing disguise that Rachel Dolezal would be proud of, but my troll bodyguard can ride a raptor right up into a demon's face and no one gives a shit. But overall, I think Blizzard have created a brilliant single player campaign here. I like that there's gentle gating to a couple of dungeons through it, and I can't wait to see how they build on this story throughout the expansion. It's definitely going to be one of the things I think we look back on with the most fondness in years to come when we look back on in this expansion. Absolute top marks to Suramar Blizz, well done, thank you. 
and of course, Mythic Plus. Because for most people, even more than raiding, this is going to be the multiplayer content that they keep coming back to up until 7.1 launches. So it's just as well that it's really good fun. It works, it's social, it's accessible, but it gets really hard, and the rewards are worthwhile. But the question for me is, is raiding going to suffer because of the convenience of Mythic Plus? Possibly, but that's a problem we'll come to later on. For 7.0.3, Mythic Plus does exactly what it's supposed to do. It's repeatable group content which scales with skill and lets people get out what they put in. It's a welcome arcade mode, really, that you can jump into at any time. At least, you know, I suppose it is anyway, because I'm a disc priest. So whenever I suggest running one, people look at me like I've just kicked their gran in the chuff for a bet. But, you know, I hear they're great, great. So, in a conclusion which is going to surprise absolutely no one, I rate World of Warcraft Legion patch 7.0.3 a big fat shiny hit. I <laughs> wasn't expecting that, were you? But of course it would be, wouldn't it? This is, after all, the easy bit. It's where the content goes next that decides whether this expansion is a real success or not. But it's fair to say it's got off to the best possible start. It's a masterful piece of work so far that gives good answers to old problems and improves on some of Warcraft's traditional strengths. I haven't felt like such a part of this world and its characters probably Ever. And assuming new content is regular and up to scratch, and that's a big if, I'm allowing myself for the moment to dream right now that Legion could well end up being one of the all-time great expansions. A man can dream, okay? Let me dream. No, no, don't say anything. Just let me dream. Thanks for joining us in our review today, it's been fun, but what we really want to know is why we are wrong and what you think, so let us know in the comments down below. And I hope you've enjoyed the video too. If you did like it, you can like it if you like, and subscribe. If you subscribe, then I promise we will make more videos. If you didn't like it, downvote the shit out of it, and remember my name is Loco TV. No, my name is Taliesin of Taliesin and Evertel. You should join us on Twitter at Taliesin Evertel and check out some more of our videos on the screen now. But until next time though, team, keep chasing that fox mount and cheerio.